Alright, so in this video we'll talk about variables, parameters, and graphs. Let's start with an experiment. Let's say that you are in charge of counting the bacteria in the petri dish as a function of time. Let's say your experiment is you start with some, uh, some bacteria on a petri dish, and then you put it in the fridge, let it culture, and then you take it out of the fridge every hour, and you count up the bacteria every hour. Okay, so let's say you're just keeping track of this in the lab notebook, so you just make a nice little table where you keep track of the time and the population, the number of bacteria you have. Let's say maybe at time uh, zero, so when you start the experiment, let's say you have half a million, and then an hour later you pull it out of the fridge and you have a million cells you can count under the microscope, and then two hours you have two million, three hours you have four million, and at four hours there are six million. Okay. So then, uh, in this experiment, you've just kind of reduced, you know, reality down to these two lists of numbers, okay? And so we call each of these quantities a variable, right? So a variable is a quantity that changes over the course of an experiment. All right? So in this situation, we actually have two variables, right? We have time, which is which is changing over the course of the experiment. Keep track of that with this variable, this mathematical symbol, P, right? And time is measured in hours, right? And we also have our population as the second variable, right? Which we keep track of with this mathematical symbol, P, right? And population is measured in millions of cells, okay? And so, you know, for every variable, we have units, right? So variable T is time, so it's measured in hours. Variable P is measured in millions of cells. Okay, and you could turn in this list of data to your PI, and they might thank you for your work, and you know, analyze it themselves, or you could try to make sense of it on your own. Okay, and so trying to analyze a list of numbers is just, it, it doesn't really give you that much information unless you're like really smart, but for me, I have to put these in a graph to make sense of what's going on, okay? So you graph things with two axes. You have your horizontal axis, or the x-axis, and on the x-axis, you put the independent variable. We'll put time here, which is measured in hours, okay? And then on the vertical axis, or the y-axis, you put the dependent variable, right? The output of your experiment. That would be p, right, which is measured in millions. Okay, and then you just plot each of these data points on the graph. So at time zero, let's say we have half a million at the start. You know, an hour later, we have one million. And then at two hours, we have two million. And then at three hours, we have four million. And then at four hours, we have six million. So let's go in here. Right? And so now we kind of have a sense of what's going on that's a little bit more clear in a graph than it was in the table, right? So in this table, you can see, okay, they're going up. But here you can see, no, they're going up kind of exponentially, right? It's not like a straight line. It's, it's curving upwards as we go on in this experiment, which is kind of what you expect for a, a population. Okay? And so let's say we ran this in a very controlled setting. We had the temperature set to 70 degrees Celsius all the time. Okay, and we go and report our findings to the PI, and they say, great, great job. You know, that's really cool, but I'm, I'm more interested in how temperature is affecting the rate of growth. Okay, so they have you run it again at different temperatures. They say run it again at maybe uh, a colder temperature, so 60 degrees Celsius, and then run it again at 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's say you do this, you collect a bunch of data, and then we'll just skip to plotting it, and let's say that uh, at 80 degrees Celsius, we start at the same place, but we grow a little bit faster. And then at uh, 60 degrees Celsius, we also start at the same place, but it grows slower. Okay, so now we have kind of an interesting conclusion, right? At 60 degrees Celsius, we still have exponential growth, but it's slower than it was in our original experiment. And at a higher temperature, it grows faster. Okay? So what we've done is we've repeated the same experiment. And in each experiment, we measured the same variable 
right? We measure time, we measure population. What differentiates these experiments is what's called a parameter, right? So a parameter is any quantity, you know, specific quantities that you're interested in that doesn't change over the course of an experiment. Right, so where the variable changes over an experiment, parameter does not. A quantity that doesn't change over. Okay, so parameter is something that will be in your in our models eventually, where we won't vary them, you know, when we're analyzing a single instance of the model, but you'll ask questions about like, how does changing this parameter affect the model? How does changing this parameter affect this experiment, right? In this case, our three parameters, you know, we get similar exponential growth, but you can see that at the higher temperature it was faster, at the lower temperature it was slower. So there's some interesting conclusions you can draw from the same experimental setup by just varying these parameters. And, and it's more information than you get from just looking at, you know, two variables. Now you're kind of looking at a third thing. Um, but over the course of an experiment, you're just varying those two variables. Okay? That's the basic difference between variables, parameters, and then how to, how to kind of represent these graphically. Okay? That's that for this video.